Welcome to another tutorial by Corinthians Corey. Today we're going to be going over one of the questions that I'm often asked, and that is how do I get the effects that I'm able to achieve in Poser? And the answer to that is using alpha masks. If you're familiar with Photoshop and the way they work in Photoshop, then you're already there. This tutorial might not even be for you. Just letting you know that you use alpha masks might be enough. But for those of you who need a little bit more teaching, stick around and we'll get to it. What you see in front of you is the head for Victoria 4. The eyes are closed. There's no other geometry that will be in the scene that we're using. I'm using a prop of the head just to demonstrate on the head so we don't have to worry about seams and no other material zones. We're going to be working on just the head for this demo. So, demo here. Uh, I've got two modes of this. So here is the fresh face, the fresh look that we'll be achieving. Then, in another session, we're going to go over and do one more. And that's this one with the makeup. And as you can see with the makeup, the skin has the same specularity as it had in the fresh face. And then there's makeup that has its own specularity, its own bump, its own... It has its own life to it. And that's exactly what makeup would do in the real world. It even has reflection on it. And it has reflection while the rest of the the rest of the face doesn't have reflection on it. And that's something that can be achieved with masks. So while you're looking at this, I'll show you exactly what's used for that. So we've got the makeup which is on its own layer and it has a white background for those of you wanting to know what if you want white makeup uh, that's another tutorial also quick answer is that you would use a portable network graphic PNG with transparency enabled but you wouldn't use the same setup that we'll be using today this is a mask here which has just the makeup in white so your usual alpha and your usual makeup so as we go along things will make more sense this is just a quick demonstration to show you what's going on anything that's in black in the mask is going to be transparent anything that's white is going to show up the background of the image itself doesn't matter what color that is although for the sake of keeping a smaller image you should make sure that it's just a black and white image don't fill this in with color unless you you know putting your stamp or something in there all right so let's get these off screen and let's get started So we're going to be heading into, oops, you know what, Poser, and in Poser you can see this is where the two renders came from. Again, keep note the specularity on the makeup. But before we start on that, let's start on something basic so that we understand what's going on. We're going to start off using one mask, and that mask is going to keep the lips with their own separate specularity in their own separate reaction to light and that's definitely something that you need when you're working on human beings in poser or any software actually you can get away with it in most software but a material zone alone isn't enough the reason why you will want to use a mask is because well the issue is the material zone for the lips has a very sharp edge around the lips and when specularity goes right around the edge of the lips you'll see a very sharp edge where if someone's got a higher specularity on the lips than they do on the skin it becomes an issue where it looks like there's a material zone and it looks fake. It really takes the realism away and it takes the life out of the image. We want to make sure that there's a nice gentle bleed and that's why we have a mask. And the mask is a huge help. So as you can see, you know what, I brought up the mask for the makeup. Hang on, let me bring up the mask for the lips. So this is the mask that I did for the lips. I made this mask in ZBrush. The reason I did that is because I wanted my mask to match exactly the lips that I made. So even if my lips aren't using the material zone that Victoria 4 naturally uses, my mask does. So if I wanted to make the mask for the lips to be glossy all the way out to the edges, all the way up to the ears and look like the Joker, I can do that because I can have a mask where only that lip and that makeup would be. That's the advantage of having a mask. You don't have to follow material zones. You still can, you just don't have to. So, as you saw, I made a nice gentle bleed there. So first I'll show you how this is set up. Again, this is for the regular face. I 
All right, so here we are inside the material material room, and let me turn off the normal map. My computer can't handle the displays of all this. And yes, I am using a normal map. How did I get that? I made it in ZBrush. I made this entire thing in ZBrush, in case anybody's wondering. Okay, so your initial setup is first. Okay, first of all, ignore all of this. I was going to start from the beginning, but what I'll do is just leave everything on screen for those of you that are copying this as you go along. Uh, your initial map is just your regular diffuse map. You're going to be plugging that in, as always, into your diffuse color. In other words, click here, find your map, as usual, and plug it in. But once you're in your advanced settings, which is where you're going to be doing your work, you are going to need to set this at zero. Now initially when you set this at zero, you'll still be able to see your mask displayed, any effects, things like that, and once the makeup is added, won't always display in your viewport depending on your computer settings. And they usually won't when you're using these advanced tricks that I do. Which, if you're a vendor, you're going to have to let your customers know that sort of thing. Because sometimes people freak out when they see special effects that they think should show up. And they only show up down here or not at all until things are rendered. The final result is always the render. Let people know. And you keep that in mind as you go along too. So, again, the first thing we work on is just getting that diffuse map in there. That's it. At this point... If you're going to be using subsurface scattering, which I chose to use, you plug that in normally. There's, I'm not going over how to use subsurface scattering, but if you're choosing on using it, you go ahead and plug your subsurface scattering the same way you always would. Um, I think it's poser eight and, or sorry, poser nine and up. You can just click add subsurface scattering. Do that at this point when you have just the image, and that's it. Nothing else. Don't bring any other maps in. Just that and then it'll set it up for you. It'll usually just plug it in right there and you're done. That's it. You don't need to do anything special. You don't need to set it up a certain way. I like to have my texture detail at a 0.8 simply because I want more detail from my texture in and I don't want it to look way too much like wax. Skin is good. At that point, you know, move this and that over here. You're done with these guys. So you can move them wherever you want just to let yourself know that you're done. I like to keep these things in a little package grid so I can put it up here and say, hey, I'm done with that. Next thing I do is work on my displacement. So I set that up. You're going to set your displacements up however you want. Please don't think you can follow what I'm doing because I'm using, I believe mine is set up for inches. So this works for me and the maps that I got from ZBrush. So you'd set up your displacement maps at this point. I'm not going to go over those either. Just the fact that, yes, this is a displacement map. Yes, it's set up, and yes, it works. You could then set up your normal map, but I always suggest doing your normal maps at the end just because once you plug this in here, it makes the whole thing look really weird unless you have a really nice computer that can display all that. What we're going to be focusing on, actually, is this section over here. Before we get started on that, let me show you. First thing you're going to do is bring in your map for your lips. So you bring in your map for your lips not knowing why you're bringing it in. And then you're going to think it's skin. What? Whenever I've looked in the advanced tabs in most vendors, uh, what you're going to see used for the skin specularity is the bling. So you bring that up. The default settings are fine. I changed mine for my own reasons. The default settings are fine. You know, you get a little bit of a skin specularity there, and that's good for what you want. Now, you could always just plug that in. Right there. Easy. No big deal. And that would get you just the skin. Matter of fact, let me move everything except for that off the screen, because that's probably confusing some of you guys. So at this point, you've only got, you've got your image map, you've got your displacement, or and or your bump map set up already then you're doing your specularity so again you just open a bling and plug it right in or blend or whatever the heck it's called uh, then you're gonna have your map for your specularity for your lips now let's say this girl whoever she is happens to be wearing lipstick at that point she's gonna want more specularity on her lips because she's gonna be wearing some sort of glossy lipstick so use bling for the skin and then when you do the lips you're going to use glossy so at that point you make a new node for lighting and you go for your glossy you bring that in I've already done that so let me just bring this over here 
So at that point, you've got glossy. Great, and that's perfect. And you've got this lip over here, which is still there. And say you wanted a glossy lip. So at that point, you could just plug your mask into the glossy and then plug your glossy into your specularity, your alternate specularity, and then you get really glossy lips. And for the sake of this, let me just increase this really f insanely high so you guys see the effect. So you get a really glossy lip and that'd be fine except you removed your glossiness for your skin and that's not going to work. So what you're then going to do is need to add the skin specularity with the glossiness of the lips and they're both going to have to work at the same time. So what you're going to do next is bring a blender node in. So you right click again, you bring map blender and you're going to be blending these two together now. I don't want to sound stupid here but that is what you're going to be doing. A blender node blends things together. Bet you didn't know that, but now you do. Okay, so yes, you can blend specularity. Anything that you can do in Poser, you can blend together using a blend node. So you're going to take your skin specularity. That's going to go in your first one. Your second one in input two is going to be your specularity for your lips. However, you don't want your mask plugged into there. You're going to plug it in somewhere else. Let me just open both, your, both of these so you can see what they look like. Your mask for your lips, you're actually going to be plugging that in down here. So at the bottom, boom. Just like that. Nowhere else, mask goes right there. So to give you a demonstration of the power this has, your mask, I mean, we're going to set these values stupidly high. We're going to set everything to 20. And as you can see, you get this really freakishly huge thing going on right there, and that looks really stupid. But that's way too big. Let's try five. That's way too big. All right. So anyway, uh, the skin itself also, that can have its own setup. The way you demonstrate this to yourself to make sure that you've got this down right is usually you want to just give some freakish weird color to things. I usually try for skin. Green doesn't appear in skin unless something's really wrong with a person. That's why we use it for green screening. Uh, so you could try it that way. Uh, lips, usually you don't have blue on lips, so you know you give that a shot. So you've got green and blue. So then you do a render to make sure that your specularity is set up correctly. I'm going to apply this to everything. And then I'm just going to do a really quick render. Subsurface scattering, ray tracing, and yes, all that stuff on. Not so high. Okay, and then I do a quick render. And what this will be demonstrating is, again, the specularity is different. And the, again, the way we're going to be proving that is because we have specularity set up in two different colors. We chose the green for the flesh, the skin of the human being. So the specularity for the skin should be green. And the specularity for the lips, I believe I chose, was blue. And I'm using a low, sp a low specular um, scene. So for me... I'm using just one infinite light to produce the lights and the shadows in the scene. And, I'm have, and I have that light focused on one side of the face, and the reason why is because I need shadows on one side of the face, light on the other side of the face. The contrast in this allows me to see how light will play against the skin, and how the form of the skin reacts with the light in the scene. That's a big deal. A lot of vendors and a lot of people, when they work, they use multiple lights, they use really beautiful lights, and they end up really messing things up because they'll get a scene that's just completely ruined exactly because of that. Okay, so as you see, we gave it a shot and look, oh no, there's glossy on the skin and everything's glossy and there's no bling. So then we go back and we say, oh my gosh, what went wrong? So we go back over and realize that I did something really stupid, which is forgetting to hook this up. Those of you watching the video probably are like, hey, Corey, you didn't hook it up. Yeah. Um, I did that for you guys, you know, just to demonstrate what was supposed to be done there. You know, what not to do. 
So remember to hook up that new node that you created. Yeah, so that's what happened. I was just doing that for you guys just to demonstrate, you know, usual mistakes. <laughs> I'm a professional. I don't make mistakes like that. Could be the time of the day. Yeah. 208. Yeah, that can do it. Anyway, let's uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, and there's the normal map doing its job. Wait for it, and I apologize, I do have an extremely slow computer. Okay, so as you see, or probably can't see, the skin does have a green tint to it. I know you probably can't tell, but it does. Uh, and as you can see by that little highlight right there, the lips do have a blue tint. So we know that our new setup is working. Turning the normal map off again. So unless you want the skin to look freakishly green, you know, don't do that. Switch all that back to white. Both inputs back to white. If you want a separate specular color, go right ahead, you know, switch that over. So congratulations, you are now done with your first setup on how to get this to work. Again, you know, keep your nodes in some workable order so that you will understand it. You don't have to set it up so that your end users will understand it. Keep it set up for you. So there. Your surface maps in one spot, that's your diffuse, all in one spot. Your bumps and your displacements all in one spot. Your specularity all in one spot. And then, you know, normal maps or any other kind of weird maps like makeup and stuff like that. You can keep them in a separate place. But once you're set up, you're good to go. So I'm going to do a apply to all again and I'll do a quick render of this so that you guys see what it looks like and then you will be good to go. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, any comments, please leave those. I will attempt to get back to you as soon as possible. If you need something else demoed, please let me know. Yay, now we're done. Unfortunately, I still have an insanely high, I forgot to lower the specular value on my glossy, but in any case, you get the idea. Don't do what Cory don't does. Yeah, so don't mess up the way I did. But the goal here is just to get you so that you understand exactly how to do it. Don't do the same thing I did, though. You know, always find your own work way. Always find your own process and stick to it. Alter, alter only when you have to. Someone else's method doesn't always work for you. And there's always other ways to do things. I'm not demonstrating the only method or even the only method that I use. This is just one, and I figure that's the best way to start. Stick around for part two, in which I will explain how to on top of this add even more effects which is with the makeup so stick around for that thanks for watching check you later